Lynn Foods Cape Takeover. If anybody asks, we call it permaculture. Planting seeds, we secure our family's future. What you give is what you got from the roots and up. What you give is what you got from the roots and up. What you give is what you got from the roots and up. Yeah. Welcome, Erica from Hip Ag, and in our episode, we are going to be featuring Sherib Silverstein from Sweet King Cafe. Welcome, and thank you. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. um, today, we're going to be making ulu gnocchi. Ulu is one of my favorite versatile crops from Hawaii. Um, it's very similar to potato, mm -hmm. so it's easy to substitute in recipes that call for potato. And gnocchi is traditionally made with potato. Today, we're going to be using fresh steamed ulu, hot mm -hmm. out of the pot, cut into cubes, and push through a ricer. If you don't have a ricer, you can use any sort of fine grater because we're going to roll it into a dough. Okay. Um, today we decided to use ulu with the peel. The peel is nutritious and delicious and adds a little bit of texture. So as you rice it, it comes mm -hmm. out in these sort of long noodle-like textures. That is so cool. I really want one of these now. My family co-owns Sweet King Cafe. Uh, we also run a farm in Popeye Co. that we grow a lot of our staple crops mm -hmm. from. And we cook those crops um, at the cafe to mm -hmm. serve fresh, healthy, local foods. Definitely is the place that I stop at when I go to Hilo for the smoothies, the cassava pizza, and whatever else they might have as a special. And then the other ingredients that we also have here besides ulu is also we're going to have a little bit of wheat flour. We have some whole spelt here. We have um, some butter. We're going to melt. We're going to be whisking up some egg yolks and some salt. There's many different types of ulu. So every ulu you choose will have mm. a little bit different texture. And um, you just have to modify the recipe based on the texture of the ulu that you have. My daughter loves to help me make this recipe because after all the ingredients are put together, it forms a really sticky dough. Mm -hmm. um, so she'll help me roll them out mm -hmm. and make her own little shapes and mm -hmm. sizes. And if you wanted to make these vegan, you could use a vegan butter mm -hmm. or a thick coconut cream. To our riced ulu mixture, mm -hmm. we're going to add some salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. Some butter and whisked eggs. Grab the butter. I can just put it in there, huh? Yeah. I'll go ahead and add some black pepper. Mm -hmm. You can also add Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm. Any other tidbits of flavor that you want in your gnocchi bites. We can go ahead and add the, egg. add the eggs and then we'll mix this up. Okay. Mix this dough together. Okay. So we're going to take some flour, pre-flour okay. the board. Mm -hmm. Traditional potato gnocchi has flour in the mixture. Ulu is a little bit stickier, so I typically don't add it. If your mixture comes out too runny, feel free to add whatever sort of flour you have around to help it all stick together. So I take just about a handful size. Mm -hmm. Start to roll it out into a long dough. I just take it and you roll it out mm -hmm. into a long log. Wow, this seems like a really nice, easy recipe. Okay, so you have mm -hmm. long log and you just take it and cut small pieces. Mm -hmm. And then we'll drop a batch into the pot. Yeah, and I like to take each piece mm -hmm. and flour the ends. Oh, yeah. Just to make sure they don't stick to each other. Mm hmm Okay. All right, we have the gnocchi made, and so the next step is dropping it into the boiling water. Yeah, we want to drop it into hot boiling water. Mm hmm Takes about two minutes. You'll see each gnocchi will drop to the bottom, mm -hmm. and when they're done, they float to the top. 
And while those uh, gnocchis are cooking for a couple minutes, uh, this is a good time to just prep your butter sauce. Gnocchi is so delicious, you don't need much flavoring to go with it. So we're just going to saute some garlic and sage into some butter and make a nice golden brown butter for serving on top. And as you can see here, Let's see. they're floating already. Oh my gosh, are they really done? So we'll take them out. Okay. Looks beautiful. So you'll know that your recipe was successful if each gnocchi stays together. Mm -hmm. um, if your water isn't hot enough or if your mixture isn't sticky enough, they can come apart and you'll end up with a pot full of oil Mess. Mm -hmm. So now while that's just cooling just a bit, what we are going to do is saute the garlic and the sage into some butter. And then once that's in, we're just going to mix it in into the pan and serve it out of the cast iron. So we're adding the garlic. Mm. So after mm -hmm. we have our sauce ready, um, I like to take the ulu gnocchi and stick them in the pan. Mm -hmm. um, depending on how crispy you like them, you can leave them in for just a minute just to add the flavor or leave them in for a little bit longer to give the outside a nice um, crispy texture. Looks so these are now going to get to be cooked into the butter garlic sage. Look at that sage and garlic on the both sides. Ooh. I know my kids would love this. It looks like the garlic's really browning. I'm going to turn this off. And I guess we're going to be getting to do the next best part of the whole thing. Okay. <gasps> yeah. Here's our finished product. Mmm. And we're going to add some pepper because I love pepper. Let's give it a try. Okay. Mm. Perfectly salted, garlicky, herbaceously sagey. Nice crisp texture on the outside. Mm -hmm. I really recommend that extra step of frying in a little bit of butter, mm -hmm. goldening it off. Mm. That was amazing. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks mm. for having me. You'll find peace in the ocean. Oh, I live. You find peace in the 